Hello, Peacher. Hello, Nathan. <laughs> Hello there, Peacher. How are you doing today? I am very well. How are you, Nathan? I'm good. Yeah, really good. It's uh, it's a nice day in the UK today. We've got like 15 degrees centigrade. It's hotter than it hotter wow. than it usually is. I know. Look, I'm bathed in sunlight. It's very nice. Amazing. You Boiling are in a diff- hot. Yeah, you're in a different spot. You look like you've moved your, your studio around. I probably have. I definitely did a while ago because the thing is, we call this a monthly yeah. appointment in a world where months are like four or five months long, probably. <laughs> I reckon we're working on Jupiter time or something we like that. We are definitely <laughs> working on Jupiter A month in Jupiter time. time. Yes. Um, let's just give everybody who's watching this, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching it on a replay or something like that, a little bit of orientation. Here's Peacher. Pichineri. Um, she is a UI UX expert, amongst other things. And the the premise of this show is that we we get submitted a, a URL or two, and then Picha raises them onto the screen and then just has a little look at them. It's kind of like a blind test. So Picha may well have spent ages looking at them, but in theory, she's she's allowed not to. And she just goes through and makes decisions and makes commentary on on what she sees from a UI UX perspective. We sometimes dabble a little bit in accessibility and also we dabble a little bit in deceptive design, AKA dark patterns. And so there'll be a little bit of that today as well. If you if you are watching this and you fancy dropping in a comment, please do. That's, you know, if you fancy it, that's great. I realize that most people who watch don't bother with all that, but if you want to, that'd be lovely. The best way to do that is probably to go to This URL, um, wpbuilds.com forward slash live. If you fancy copying and pasting that into your social media platform of choice, feel free. Um, If you go there, you need to be logged into Google because it's got YouTube comments on it. If you're watching it in a Facebook group or something like that, then we don't know who you are unless you do this little thing. You have to go to chat.restream.io forward slash FB and that will enable Facebook to tell us exactly who you are so yeah we've got a couple of sites for you today or at least peach has i haven't seen them at all i don't know whether you've spent any time perusing them peach or not so i just want to acknowledge melanie's comment thank you so much melanie she's saying that she always learns something when when peach talks and i am delighted to hear that i absolutely do not take it for granted the funny thing is that i learn stuff as well ha huh. and i'll show you how so The two sites that we're going to look at today, I actually do know because Mm. I work with them in in a couple of capacities. They're both really worthy initiatives for different reasons. So I and the the websites belong to people that I really uh, have a lot of time for. So that's why uh, I'm, I'm doing them also because honestly, reviews are the best thing that you can do for especially reviews from someone that isn't involved with it with a project right reviewing it is the best thing that you could do because by the way i also sell the these reviews i mean obviously much deeper level and the the clients are always uh so happy because when you work on something too closely you suffer from so-called proximity blindness yeah. and you can't see the woods for the trees True. which is an expression that took me ages to understand now i get it you can't see the woods i mean the forest for the trees because you look at the details you can't see the bigger picture that's what it means exactly if any non-english not na- non-native english speaker is watching that's what it means and it goes the other one that took me ages, and i was like sorry it's just too stupid was eat uh have your cake and eat it and i was like well if you're eating it you're having it <laughs> so it was like what what on earth does this mean and now now i got it so basically that's what, what the, the the equivalent uh italian saying is terrible and very sexist but um it's basically, <laughs> it is it is it's just one of those things that you listen you you hear it now and you go really uh, and it's, it's it's about having keeping the wine barrel still full of wine but the wife is drunk uh, uh, <laughs> so it's the same thing as having your cake and eating it so there you go anyway 
Huge digression because we always do this. We, well, we always do. We're digress. Good at digression. What, yeah. what is there in life apart from digression, really? Absolutely, it's, it's yeah. the best bits. Um, yeah. I'll just I'll just raise the URLs quickly on the screen. You might want to get your screen shared. Um, yes. We never did that. So I definitely want to do that. Two sites today. Uh, and I don't know if we're going to do these in the order I'm going to show them on the screen. But you might want to, if you're watching this, you might want to get them lined up. Um, yeah. We've got intrepidenglish.co.uk. That's one of them. And another one is going to be supportinclusionintech.com. Yep. And then you never know, if there's a little bit of time left over at the end, um, then we might look at another one called deceptive.design, which is the sort of dark patterns one. Your screen share has gone away. In, oh, there it is. There it is. Let me see if I can raise that. Uh, I can see that. Hopefully you can see that feature. That looks perfect to me. Yeah. We're looking at support inclusion in tech so i'll stick the url up at the bottom of the screen and uh away you go so here we are um this website is the initiative of the wonderful winstina hughes who doesn't even work with wordpress is just involved in the community has given a number of talks and she's completely committed to making the speaker's cohorts more inclusive because there is a certain bias I'm afraid Nathan there is a bias and that keeps being a bias um yeah I'm watching with interest the speakers being announced at uh, w, um, work and Europe and definitely uh yeah it's I'm, I'm still hoping it will improve so w the, what this initiative does is because as you probably uh, most people who are involved with WordPress know when you are accepted as a speaker at a WordCamp, you have you're responsible for your own transport and accommodation when you go to the conference and you don't get paid either. I won't get started on what I think about this. <laughs> I, know, I won't do that, Nathan. <laughs> I won't do it. I won't do it. So this initiative, I mean, it's it always existed uh, most most of the time. So um, I have self-funded a few of my work camps, work camp talks, but mostly it was either Cloudways when I was working with Cloudways and Yoast a lot of the time. Thank you, Yoast, so much. They have a diversity fund. Make sure that you, uh, if you're a, a minority in tech, that would be a woman, person of color, a disabled, uh, LGBT, you know, there's all the various minorities. They all like that. You've changed. Yeah, it's a bit something. bigger, isn't it? I just flicked yeah, it on. Yeah. I thought that yeah, would be better. Yeah, good. That's great. We like it. So uh, you you qualify. So if you qualify, I mean, being a female is enough, <laughs> really, but there's lots more diversity types that are uh, that people want actively want to be more represented. I firmly and very strongly believe in representation. There's a heap of research that proves that representation is all that matters. If you see someone that looks like you doing something, it will be natural for you to do it. If you don't, it won't be natural. That is why we still have never had a woman president of the United States and so on. Anyway, again, I won't. I, I feel like I'm about to get on my soap soapbox. <laughs> you know, I do that, so I'll stop here. However, this wonderful <laughs> initiative, and also I was also sponsored by Master WP, Rob Howard. So thank you so much. And that's what Winstina did for me. She, uh, she, when I went to WordCamp Bangkok, she paired me with the right sponsors. That's what she does. Why have I gone so I have big? no idea. I seem I to don't, have the button. I I'm do gonna, not want to be that let me big. press that one. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she, she, what you do is you um, fill in a form on the website and she will – what are you doing? I'm trying to fix <laughs> – I clicked a button completely by accident and now I'm trying to fix the mistake I've made. So you keep oh. talking. I'll try and mend what I've done wrong. Okay. So again, why is it me this big? Because this person doesn't know. <laughs> it doesn't have the retouch, the the zoom retouch. I don't want my high red death. Okay. How's He's that? Like, yeah, that is better. There like, we oh, go. that's perfect. It's... Don't touch anything. This is no. great. Don't touch anything. Okay, cool. <laughs> so uh you you go, you you get a, you need to you get accepted to a WordCamp, 
you go, you fill in the form, Winstina will get in touch and she will pair you with sponsors because there are lots more people. Like I only knew about the Yoast uh, Diversity Fund, but there are loads more people, uh, companies, organizations within the WordPress uh, microcosm that will sponsor you to go and speak at a WordCamp. So do go to this website. Now, uh, you know what the first? What's the first thing that I look at? Do you remember? We have well. You like to school. know what to do. You know, if you you like I to, do, to be told to do something, if you like, what should I do? Yeah, and there isn't anything here that does that. So Winstina said said to me because I I do know this site. Often I don't, but I do know that uh, she really wanted to have this here, supporting an underrepresented speakers with WordCamp expenses, which is exactly what the website does. And here she explains, you know, there's a question and answer. Who are underrepresented speakers? They come from around the world, a member of diverse groups, uh, and so on. So this is a really useful explanation. But what I... But it's not welcoming me. So I would recommend to, and, and it, it doesn't give me anything to do. It's a little bit uh, overworked. So I think personally that the, I won't comment on the logo. I would recommend the logo to be simpler very briefly and to avoid script, like handwritten typefaces wherever mm. possible because they're mm. not, they are not that legible, um, so they're not that accessible. However, I would make that really quite a bit smaller because you, you're saying it's already on the top left. I actually, funny enough, you know, I used to be a brand designer. I've worked mm, with mm, brand a lot. I've yeah. designed loads of logos. I actually believe that the logo doesn't matter, really. <laughs> the, the way it's written up there was fine. So it's kind of, there's a repetition there. You don't really need the logo. What you need is for people to take action. And the question... I think that it could be, it needs thinking. It's not something that you solve in, in a 10 minute review, but uh, something like, are you a member of, are you a, a WordCamp speaker from an underrepresented group in yeah, tech? Yeah. Something like that. And, uh, and then a, a button that takes you straight to the form. So, and I think it's important absolutely to say, so this could be, a uh, strap line here under the logo up here. I would have the logo just once and I would have it up to the left. And then once you do that, you will soon see that when you make this logo smaller, you don't really get much of it because there's lots of detail. So, and then have this supporting and representative speaker would work of expenses down here below as a paragraph below the logo on the top left. And absolutely have this, um, and then receive, so because this is actually below the fold, this is what matters. Receive yeah, work and yeah. travel expense support is what matters. And uh, it's, it's too low. Uh, and here, see, there are uh, global partners, GoDaddy, Post Status, Yoast, and Master WP, Wiglot, Gravity Forms, Paid Memberships Pro. There's loads of people willing to help you if you want to go to a work camp. I know actually of more, more than these. So don't think that you can't go. Please ask. So I hope that my cache is cleared because it takes so it's not working actually. Anyway, there's something else that I would probably say. What is it, Nathan? Um, what am I going to say well, next? Well, typically you talk. Actually. Oh, and there it is. It's just <laughs> it's just loaded. Yeah, sorry. You are going to talk about aligning things to the left, but I can't see a. I mean, the logo doesn't align to the left, but is it menu items? It's menus. Okay, right. Well, it's manual items. Uh, they don't align to the left. Um, but m more than that is, let's count the typographies on this Oh, okay. So we've page. got, what have we got? There's one, like one typeface here, which yep. I believe is Mons. I think it, it looks like Montserrat, Montserrat, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The logo has three two more. Yeah. I mean, the, the support inclusion is the same typeface. And then there's the third one. Okay. And then here... Uh, actually, this has changed slightly. It was a different typeface, but I mean, it's a fourth one. This is a fifth one. Uh, that fifth could one, be Montserrat one. again, couldn't it? That one there. No, maybe yeah, not. Yeah, no, I think no, it's capital, no, you're right. yeah. capital Ariel. Because it's my... There was a misunderstanding. So 
there, this is not because what we see here is is a default. It's just a serif. It's like Times New Roman. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a fallback, fallback typeface. There were different typefaces. There was actually a typeface that I really liked, um, but I asked to be reverted back to the many typefaces because otherwise there's no point to have in the review. Okay. So it doesn't look exactly what it looked like. Uh, before so unify the typefaces for sure also i have a slight issue because this is where's your heading one let me just check where the heading one is actually i don't need to do this i can just do check with the uh, so zero contrast errors which is great now this wave accessibility evaluation tool is just a very vague indicator because it doesn't pick up on a lot of things and it picks up on things that don't really matter so let, don't, that's not, but I just, it's really useful because it will tell me what the H1 is. So the H1 is support inclusion in tech. This one, I guess, the logo. The, okay. Or, or the logo on the top. I don't, I can't see where it is. Uh, yeah, because it's at the top, it's above the navigation. Yeah, it'll be the, the, it'll be the word in the top left then. And then H2 yeah. is thank you, global partners. So a screen reader would find it hard to make sense of this. What is this page about? They wouldn't know. So uh, because what a screen reader does it, is it gathers the headings first to work out what the page is about. So support inclusion in tech, yeah, H1, fine. That's the name of the website. But this... Actually, so these are so missing alternative text. You always should put <clears throat> alternative text. But so um, this supporting underrepresented speakers with work of expenses really should be a heading too. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it looks like uh, it's not, and it should it's be. It's a block quote as well, doesn't it? it look, yeah, exactly. It looks like a block quote. I don't know if it actually is a block quote. Yeah, it is a block quote. And this is not a block quote. It should be a heading. And then uh, you, you, I don't know if you need to say question and answer. You just need to make this a heading. And then the paragraph speaks, uh, says what it is. And, uh, and absolutely say something. All you need is a sentence about the fact that support inclusion in tech was created to help underrepresented speakers with work and expenses because work comes are not paid for conferences. You don't get anything. And then thank you, Global Partners. Thank you can definitely be a, um, a heading three at that point. It doesn't need to be a heading two for sure. Uh, are they, I don't know if, it didn't say that uh, they lack uh, old text. So even if you have a logo, it has to have old text. Yeah. Because again, that tells the screen reader what the image is otherwise the screen reader has no way of knowing what the image is and then you haven't done your global partners any favors because they and then here i actually really like this menu i like i mean ideally you would have some hover effect on the menu which you don't have so one thing that i find always really odd and it's a wordpress thing I never know. So where am I supposed to go? Am I supposed to go to steps for support or apply for support? What's the page? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, it's hard to weird. know whether yeah whether the top level one is a menu. And yeah. if it's not a menu, it doesn't really have any business being there, does it? It should be the one beneath it. Um, okay, so yeah, exactly. So I would say, actually, I'm going to go back, sorry, because the logical thing to do now if I were a speaker would be to... Uh, receive WordCamp travel expense support. I hope it's not already filled because. So this is um, this is the speaker registration form. So these are the 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 funds here are resolving. They are resolving the way they should. They weren't in the homepage, but they are. So I can't tell when. So again, there's a bit of a mishmash of typefaces because there's this and there's this, and I think that this is a different typeface. But it's hard yeah. to work out because when I go to inspect, this is a um, an elemental website, I think, and therefore it uses the global settings. And I I can't tell what the typeface is. Maybe it's my limitation that I I don't know how to do that. Okay. Right. So I can't tell if the heading is the same typeface as the body or not. I can't tell. 
but I can tell that this is and th there's no need. These two, the heading and the and the body look different enough that you don't need to have a third typeface here. Even though it looks, it, it does look nice. Doesn't look terrible, but so you shouldn't have uh, floating labels inside the field. So oh oh, it's a drop down menu. Okay, so I don't know how. We actually can't see the drop down. That's a limitation of the, of the uh, platform that we've got. So there's a yeah. there's a drop down here uh, okay. that uh, tells you my language does not have uh, gender pronouns or otherwise she her he him they them. This is oh, sort okay. of it, it's nice because it's inclusive, but maybe is that enough? Because it could say I don't want to say that the the. the yeah, okay, she's asking for preferred pronoun. She's not asking for gender, which is something that always sets me off. Why do you need to know? She's actually asking for preferred pronoun, which is the best thing that you can do because then if someone doesn't, you know, looks like looks away, but then doesn't want to be, you know, at least you know how to refer to people. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, good. Welcome, accepted to speak at. This is all quite clear. I'm not going to go into detail because we are, it's already, Good yeah, grief, we don't have that much past, time. Yeah. I know, I know. So what type of financial support? I really want to give this uh, project the time that it de deserves. Mm. So I would say that this looks uh, quite, uh, so again, the I would not put these questions in caps because there are two problems with this. First of all, Montserrat has very, very wide um, tracking, which is the, the distance between characters. It's really wide. It makes it hard to read. And also, it, using all caps is problematic. It's hard to read for people who have dyslexia. Uh, it's generally harder to read unless it's like a couple of words. And also, it may co cause problems with screen readers because even in case you've coded it correctly, rather than just pressing the uh, lock caps key, even when you coded it correctly, some screen readers may still read it as an acronym. Hmm. No, it's just so... Uh, all caps is problematic, so it's best avoided. And there's no need to use a different typeface. Why would you do that? It's just, it creates visual clutter. And this website is really nice because it's so clean. I really like that. So yeah. let's keep it yeah. clean and use this typeface and, and that typeface, which is really nice. I like that typeface. Again, there's a drop down menu. I don't know. I have not tested this with a keyboard. You just have to make sure that this can be used with a keyboard. There's uh, in the WordPress community, because I know that Winstina is going to watch this. She can't now, but she's going to watch it. There's <clears> Alex <throat> Stein in the WordPress community that I'm sure will be happy to just test whether this is accessible on a keyboard or not. Uh, otherwise, I can help. So uh, it's connected to Michelle and um, Ali Nimmons database, which is an underrepresented in tech profile. And you need to do that uh, to, to create a profile there. If, if uh, So again, I like very much that you've, you've got a save and continue later thing and that uh, you can decide if you are uh, happy to talk about the fact that you're receiving sponsorship or not. I've always been happy to talk about it, but if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to, and therefore they're asking. So they're really, really doing their best to think about people's sensitivities. Now here... We need a hover yeah. style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. need we need a difference when you hover on the button. I need to know it's interactive. And here, same because also it doesn't even look like a button. So yes, make them look different, but use different hover effects. Okay. So um, st apply for support. So that's the thing. So what's in steps for support? Ooh. Okay. No. Uh, this <laughs> is very, it's very hard to read. So why center this? Do not center it. So I like the fact that the, that it's quite narrow because it makes it really easy on mobile. It's unfussy and so on. But this, the, the heading is lower 
than the text. And so it's centered, it looks like it's centered yeah, 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 vertically yeah, yeah. Yeah. as well as, as well as, um, I just want to see what's the heading one. So yeah, it's centered horizontally text. and vertically within the cell, Structure. isn't it? Within the table cell. So yeah. we want to make this, so skipping, skipping headings, you can't go from H1 to H1, H4. To H4. That's H4. really confusing and bad for SEO. And also you have to consider that uh, even though you do, I understand why you want to say uh, we want to make this simple, but that's not the heading of the page, is it? The page is about the steps for support. So call it steps for support. That's your heading one. Uh, and then you can say, we want to make this as simple as possible, but do say it, but it's not the title, in my opinion. It's the steps for support. So, uh, and this is, sorry, I'm just going to, so these are, style them, so these are not, probably not headings. Anyway, I won't go into detail, but this needs, the heading one needs to be different. Definitely, definitely aligned to the left and definitely aligned to the top. Yeah, I rarely yes, well. suffer from the the things that you highlight. In other words, I can see it and read it, but I can understand. But that one actually got me. I saw that yeah. and I was immediately like, ooh, no. no uh, it, yeah, it feels like if you spread the, 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 the heading, we want to make this simple, just horizontally over the whole thing, and then all the other text underneath it, one, two, three, exactly. four. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, already that looks nicer, doesn't it? Already just, it's better, but yeah. you need to also uh, align to the, to the top. top. Yeah, and uh, and not because that's not very readable either. Is no, it, when it's just two words, when the lines are th there, is such a thing as too short a line. Yeah, and I understand why this is happening. It's I think it's because she's got a very very small yeah grid. She's yeah. using a very very small grid so that's why um but that's definitely the the other thing that i would absolutely do and then really quickly Ooh. same here you know how i feel i just can't be that's behind central line center but what text. a change what a contrast in the text size from that to the previous page yeah. yeah so make it so why why make it h5 this really needs to be a h1 because supporting inclusion in tech is proud to support 10 speakers or 10 organizers maybe change it but you don't have a, a heading one for this. You don't have a heading one, so you need a heading one. Yep. Really. Uh, round one, cohort one speakers. Can I ask you a question uh, about the, the text that we're looking at there, the line height? What's your thoughts about that? Do you find that to be too spread out, or is that about yeah, where you like it's it? A, it's a little bit too high for it me, for and me, I would yeah. definitely make the typeface bigger as well. Mm -hmm. This is borderline problematic if not straight on problematic i think what's the size again it doesn't it doesn't say because uh but yeah so i would say that make it bigger uh and then the about page i wanted to comment because it doesn't tell me what it is about really it's does it it doesn't this no, is i'm not a sure where of, to begin there to be honest exactly I'm not sure. so Again, so then we find out here, but it's really confusing. Also, you've got such a tiny grid. Don't do three columns. Keep it one column. And um, uh, this project, so this needs to be the first paragraph. This project is an extension of Wistina's WordPress contribution. So yeah. this needs to be the beginning up here, a paragraph taking up the whole of the grid. And then the rest can be, can be you know, find out more in, in these publications you know something like that and then and then at the end i would even say this is my this is what i've done uh for uh, wordpress so far which is impressive yeah really it really impressive. is well done but <laughs> really impressive yeah so uh let me just what's here okay no. uh, that just links away to an external site yeah, why would you have that? I'm not sure because it doesn't actually help your I understand why you do it because you love WordPress, but here you want people to know about your project. It's not about someone else's project. It's about your project. So I would keep people here. And uh, Winstina, happy to talk again. I think a oh, uh, speaker's speaker directory. So that's, oh, I wonder if that's really Michelle's. odd. Is that no. linking off to an external site as well, or is that just a null link? That Nothing's doesn't go happening. Okay. 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 
So, um, ooh, that's really weird. Yeah, I don't know. That's just a bunch of comments on a post, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's not. I think these are these are um, entries from the from the form. Okay. I would not be comfortable with, even though I'm completely comfortable with my my to, for, for people to know that I've been sponsored. I would not. So I think this is my entry. I don't want that there. I don't want for people to know what I asked for. What I, you know, do you know what I mean? These, these are the. It's not a speaker directory. It's, it's the entries to the form. Luckily, yeah. I don't think you can go any further. This is all you see. If but you take um, it out. If yeah, that's. Um, I mean, there are no names attached, so at least it's anonymized in that sense. But that does seem like a GDPR snafu there. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, and it's not a speaker list either no so. no so okay. i think yeah that's uh that's all we've got time for plenty for winstina got... to get her teeth into with that one i think yeah and uh we can uh have a chat winstina when you walk when you when you watch this after you watch this now let me intrepid english so this is the site of that i am actually rebuilding and I have, I might have to sneeze. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> shall I mute you? <laughs> I shall mute you. Uh, oh, it's, it would look like a good one, though. That was worth, oh, any more coming? No. Go no, on. that's fine. But you know <laughs> I when, muted you. <laughs> you know when also you think, okay, it may not happen. It should yes. happen, but it may not happen. Yes. Anyway. So this, I, this is a, um, it's actually a website that I am rebuilding. So I do know this one, but I think it's a really interesting case because Winstina's site, she built up herself without being a web designer. That's not her job. So she's done an amazing, an amazing job. This website is for this online language school called Intrepid English. And it's a typical case of a website that was created, say, 10 years ago. And it's been... Uh, it's known some organic growth, so to speak. So it's uh -huh, a really uh -huh. interesting case because it had, I don't know how many, it had like, I think as many as three page builders on it Ooh. because people were just like adding them and things like, because it's it has a members area that is actually on a separate URL, but the previous... I don't know who'd done it, but someone had moved everything to the member's URL, but then, which is on, behind a paywall, uh, but they hadn't actually taken the courses away from this oh, URL. Oh, so in it was fact, all available. All the courses were available <laughs> at some point. Then they didn't, you know, they were taken out. So... Uh, but it's it's that kind of thing, and because it, it's a big site with loads going on. And uh, what do you think I would say here? Because it isn't aligned to the left. It wasn't. They changed well, it. Well, you need something to do, right? Speak English with confidence. You're not. You need something given to do. Something to do, right? No, you're not given anything to do, which you will be in the next one. And then also another thing is that the tax on the image is going to be problematic because when I resize this yeah. window, it's going to go on the on the lady's face. So text on an image, there is an overlay below, but it's not enough, is it? it, it it's just, it, you know what I always say, yeah. like, it's either about the image or it's about the text. If the text is more important, then don't have the image. Just don't have it. It's not necessary. So there's no need to do too much. In fact, often we need to do as little as possible then again look how many typefaces we've got here so here we've got um it's not monster right it's the other one it's, uh, is it is railway, it railway? I think, looks I like think railway. it's railway yeah i think this might be an elemental page so they're probably not going to tell us either oh look it's a it's an inline style mm. uh it's it is railway yeah it is railway but it's also got <clears> a an accessibility issue because this green that they love that Lorraine love who's the founder of the school 
is just not accessible. It breaks my heart, but it's basically hardly ever accessible. So this is a contrast era, definitely not accessible with white on top at almost any size, because I was thinking maybe we can use it. We can use very big, chunky white text on a big title against that beautiful green, but it's just not accessible even, even then. So 28 contrast errors, which, you know, you know, this is all. And also Lorraine cares a lot about accessibility. So we are rebuilding something that is much more accessible. But in terms, so we've got railway here, railway here in members area, uh, a different typeface for yeah, different English. color as well, different blue, isn't yep. it? We've got a dark blue and a pale blue. And this, but the the menu is a different typeface again. Yeah, yeah. So the thing about the logo looking different, a different green, is that it's probably the same green. But when you export from Photoshop or any other program, there's always a variation. You will not get the same color even if it's you're using the same hex code and so on, it won't be the same color. And again, if you were to see it on a different browser, again, it wouldn't look the same. That's why, do you remember what my Bangkok talk, what the title was? Probably not. I, I forget. That. No, only I you, wasn't there, yeah. <laughs> only your cardboard <laughs> Only my cardboard cutout, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> It, the, to, the title of my Bangkok talk, which is on YouTube, Work Camp Asia, was Color is an Opinion. Mm. And I firmly believe that uh, it's fairly pointless because nobody's going to see it. It's going to look different depending on so many variables and nobody's going to see it the way you see it or feel the way you feel about your favorite color. So it really doesn't matter so much. But I think that it shows that this is this on white. It just, yeah, does it not, not strong enough. So too many typefaces uh, and we are sorting uh, that out. Now here we've got, I'm just going to, I'm going to check. So one thing the wave tool is really good for is the structure. So speaking is reconfidence. That's good. So we've got two heading ones because I think maybe WordPress that does that automatically if it, for the homepage, it gives it the, name of the site because it's a home page so it's automatically heading one so any so speaking with confidence suddenly you have two heading ones which is yeah you good. you typically have to sort of disable the title or something like that um yeah so in we'll, which we'll case do that, that might yeah. need it to be done yeah so do you feel nervous about speaking english is a good I'm surprised it's not marked at as um, as a as a co as, color contrast problem. Yeah, because definitely in the contrast checker, this does not pass <clears throat> master master. Also, because and this is something that the tool doesn't pick up on. It's very thin. This version, it's big. It's big enough, but it's very thin, this typeface. Uh, uh, and this version of the of railway that we're using here. So I if there, there are people with certain types of you know vision issues that would not see it that uh, easily. And here, center text, why? No, not no reason. Uh, and um it's very, a very, very, very long line. Yeah, it really now, is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Very long line. So one of the things that we're sorting here is that here you do have something to do, but then, and, and it looks like these are the three steps, but they're not really. So we're, we're sorting out the user journey here. And again, we won't have all these images with, tech, with text on top because they're virtually illegible. I can't really read it. Again, you're trying to do too much. You don't need that. You need for people to know where to go. So that's the important thing is book a, a trial lesson, choose your membership or access the members area. So you don't really need the photo, the photo underneath. So, uh, and again, there's, I don't really, th this is very tiny for me. I can barely read it. And I think it's really strange. Where does it see the contrast error? Errors. Yeah, you did have one earlier. It was in the um, it was in the menu item 
at, right at the top of the site, there was a button. So these, okay. So the see, it definitely is saying that the green on this gray is uh, is a contrast error. So there's another accessibility error here, which is that the links are not <clears throat> underlined. People who can't see color, there's not enough differentiation. You always need to underline links. Basically, you just you you need to. Again, here it doesn't contrast checker. Every contrast checker says that you can't have the white on here, but the wave tool, the white that white on this teal color is not accessible. So strange that it doesn't come up, but mm. uh, yeah, but never mind. Good. Um, and then, um, and then, sorry, I'm just going to turn it off. Turn it off, yeah. So these are uh, these are the main things, really. But the main thing for me with this site was to tidy it up and to give something to do immediately and to redefine the user journey. What always ask yourself: What do you want people to do? This is already. I know that here they were trying to simplify, but actually, if I clicked and went, you would see that it's not an easy journey at all. So we're doing that. So the first thing that you always, whenever you're building a site, give people something to do at the top because you need to ask yourself, why are people coming to see my site? What do I want from them? And what is the best thing for them? You have to find that sweet spot where the business goals coincide with the user's needs. Mm. So the... And when you have a really clear mission, that's not that difficult. And the thing is with Intrepid English that they are a brilliant uh, online language school. They're quite unique in what you do. They do because they are hand-picked teachers. You don't get you know there are lots of language schools that have like thousands of teachers. That so it's very impersonal. It's uh, people only ever end up picking the teachers that come at the top. Uh, and but this is completely different because you have these are all the teachers that you have. There's like 10, maybe 12, 11 teachers, and there isn't um, that's it, they're handpicked. So you're always you're always gonna have the same teacher. You it's an academy, it's an online academy with lots of self-study courses as well, but it really is different uh, for that. And their mission is to empower people with English. That's why they have uh, students in uh, all countries because they really want to make a difference for people. Mm. That's their main mission. So what they want people to do is to book a trial lesson. Right, that button. Once people mm. have booked a trial lesson, they usually come on board because it's very affordable. There are, also, there are many different plans and they're all really affordable and you get a lot with them. So uh, that's what we are going to get them to do, Nathan. We're it kind of feels like in the menu the at the top, lesson. the try a free course should be the button, the blue, you know, the, the highlighted button, whereas the members area should just be a regular link, if you know what I mean. If you really want people to try yeah. the free course, swap those yeah. around maybe. But they yeah. don't, that's not, so the free, so again, language used was another thing that we really talked a lot about because it's confusing, because I thought the same as you. But a book of, if a trial lesson is not the same thing as try a free course, because a free no. course is a self-study course, and it's static. So it always sits there. It doesn't change. It's a pre-recorded course. A trial lesson is a live lesson with a teacher that tells you what to expect from the, uh, from the school, and it prepares a personalized uh, path for you. So right, that's something right. else that's, that makes a difference, that makes this a really different school because it empowers people, because it, it puts you your success at the center. It's just that I've been working on it today, and the, the copy is really good. It's just like uh, we're focusing on your success, something like that. And it's done with a personalized study plan. Oh, that's, see, that's all really interesting to know, isn't it? If you get that personal touch, I think you're far yeah. more likely to to yeah. uh, to get involved, knowing that it's not just some sort of cookie cutter exactly. course. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. interesting. 
So this is getting super simplified as well because once you, I mean, you look at this and you go, wow, we are definitely trying to say way too much. So the rule of thumb always is don't make them think. You know this. So are we not, uh, uh, no, you're not seeing... uh, you're not seeing the the. We don't see not... the inspector or or any of the. No, no, of... not the ex- inspector. This is the page that I was on, but I opened it as a tab. So, when you have a pricing table, make it as easy as possible, because the only thing that's clear here really is the price, and that's really clear. Mm. But then, once I got to studying this to redesign it, I realized that the only real difference between all the plans is the number of hours that you get with your teacher. Oh, right, yeah, this everything else like, looks the same, That's it? the yeah. only <laughs> difference. And I think, you know, the things like the value per month, those are things that it just doesn't matter. You know, you can say it, but this here is just super confusing. So we're totally changing that and simplifying it massively. So bear that in mind, make things as easy as possible because... What's the mantra, Nathan? What's the mantra? The uh, mantra is... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't make me think. Oh, don't make me think. Yeah, Krog. So Krog. Here the, <laughs> exactly. Steve Krog, the book is Don't Make Me Think. For those who haven't uh, read it yet, just read it is my recommendation. Now, I have done something wrong in this review nathan i've done it wrong i tell you what i've done wrong so i have recently been uh, working with and receiving coaching speaking lessons coaching for speaking by lazar bulatovic who's going to speak at work of europe and he's blind from birth and has been using a screen reader since 2004 so as he was coaching me uh teaching me how to be a better uh, speaker he, I realized that I had already actually started doing it, but I've been doing it, like really making a point of it. When he tells me, when he says, now, now make up a speech on this, I have to not use images because he won't see them. Yeah. So I, even if there is an image on the screen, I need to talk about it in such a way that someone who's not, who's maybe listening to this as a podcast understands what I'm talking about. And my uh, in the Bangkok talk, I really tried, and it was a talk on color, but I really made a point of thinking, okay, I have lots of images, but if someone listens to this talk, they need to understand it even without the images. I don't know if, if I succeeded, but with the UX Copenhagen talk that I did back in March, wow, I can't believe it was already March. Anyway, I uh, really, really, you can listen to that talk and it won't make any difference. Oh. I, uh, but I am not saying, now the image on the screen, uh, there's fishes, because I did have fishes, you know, and uh, there's a beach. I didn't do that. I just talked about Correct the images on. in yeah, a way yeah, that yeah. that uh, was seamless. And th- And I haven't, and I always try to do that now, and I haven't done it this time. No, I that's because it's interesting. not. I it's haven't done easy. it. It's not easy when you're doing it in a in a non-pre-prepared way. When it's pre-prepared, yeah. you can sort of hijack your muscle yeah. memory for writing and get all of those crucial yeah. things down. Whereas when you're doing it live, you revert to old old habits, don't you? Which is exactly. just to say what you see. Um, so that's a huge accessibility point that anyone listening or watching this, if you do any public speaking, any any show like this one, because I used to do loads of online talking. I don't really anymore. So bear that in mind. What about people that can't see what you do? Because nobody talks about this. You have to describe what's on the screen. Otherwise, people are screwed. They can't. And I, you know who told me this? Bud. He's, um, he's a, uh, in the WordPress community, and he's registered blind, and he is in the New York, I think. Is it Bud Krause? Is it him? Yeah, I think yeah. it's Bud Krause. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Bud, if, I, if you watch this and I've forgotten <laughs> because I'm old. But yes, that's him. 
And he said, you know, there's an image on screen. People just carry on talking. All they have to do is tell me what is there and I will know. And other, it just ruins everything. It's kind of and interesting being a podcaster primarily. We we do this show on Monday and I'm we constantly put things on the screen. And I, I do try because I realize that the, most of the people are not watching it. They're listening to it uh, after the fact. And so I do try to say, okay, we're now looking at this, and the, but it, it is it's habit. You just sort of gloss over it um, and forget about it. Yeah, so good point, good 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 issue. Yeah, I really recommend that people start doing this. I really do, and I'm sorry I didn't do it today. Next time, it, Peter. It was wrong. Next time I Next will time. make it. But I will remind. I just need to remind myself is what I need to do. Really. Or I can try and remind you if you remind yeah. me to remind you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, it's absolutely. a reflective loop. So are you happy with that one? Do you want? Do you think we've got time to look at the deceptive design site? Not I think from a, we've got five minutes. Not from a UI UX perspective, but just from a, no. it's an interesting place to visit, isn't it? So you know that we, well, you know, but just <laughs> we always talk about uh, deceptive patterns. And unfortunately, my talk wasn't accepted at Work and Pura, but I was really looking forward to doing it because it was all about deceptive patterns and um, ethical design and things like that. And um, there are things that are ethical online and things that are not ethical. This is this man here is Harry Brignall. He's a Brit. This man here on the, we're looking at the homepage of the yeah, well new done. website well for done. deceptive patterns. There are a few images on the, on the screen. And what the one on the bottom right is, Harry Bricknell, who who's who's the first one to start talking about dark patterns, now know as deceptive patterns or deceptive design because <clears throat> people didn't with a darker skin tone didn't like the fact that dark patterns was associated with something negative. So they were like, can you we please find a new term? And it was found. So that's what it's called now. And um uh, so it's uh, it's a new website because the, it, it had an old site on for a long time, and I love it. It's really good because it's got all the types of deceptive pattern. Deceptive patterns are tricks used in websites and apps that make you do things that you didn't mean to. Oh, it's horrible! And it's horrible, and there are so many, and they're there all the time. And uh, so these are all the the types. Uh, we're looking at comparison prevention, confirm shaming, which is when uh, people just go, you know, are you sure you don't want to get the coolest download ever? Do you want to be a saddo and not get this? Yes, you know, yeah, because yeah. Because people think they're being funny is great, it isn't. Disguised ads, Yeah, they sort of they, say, they, they phrase the question in terms of, you know, you, you are a bit of a loser if you click on this button. Are you sure you don't want to miss out on this cool deal? All the cool kids are doing it. That kind of thing. It's Yeah, it's weird. It never works on me, that one. I just think. Mm, oh, it works that, on me as in yeah. it, it makes triggers me you. Yeah. furious. Fake, uh, fake scarcity, fake social proof, fake urgency, forced action, hard to cancel. Hard to cancel is really something that Apple was very guilty of. You didn't know you'd signed up to an app and then you didn't know how to cancel it. It used to take me ages to work out how to cancel it. My nephew once spent 500 euros without knowing. I couldn't even blame him. It's like, anyway, they gave it back to me. Nagging, uh, obstruction, pre-selection, sneaking trick wording visual interference my favorite page on this website is the hall of shame oh nice i love the hall of shame oh here we go <laughs> so oh. this is for instance this is uh, one that i hate user cannot cannot unsubscribe from marketing emails without accepting cookie tracking oh for goodness i have sake. to accept all cookies in order to unsubscribe from uh ibkr marketing emails interactive brokers so there are so <laughs> many here. I I love them. I love them. Oh, I am. Um, so I went through a a process cancelling a WordPress plugin not that long ago, and it was hated absolutely it. torture. Um, I it? won't I won't mention who, but um, yeah, it was about eight pages of just madness. Um, wow. 
Trump's okay. got his own section. Is that Trump? Trump has got. So I just clicked on the Trump because there's a filter on the on the left with all the various brands that have that are in the Hall of Shame. Oh, that's brand. Is one it? of them. One of them is Trump. So, an opinion poll on Trump's website contains a deceptive request for a donation. Wow, with recurring <laughs> monthly with payments. recurring selected. monthly repayments pre-selected. Uh, yeah, those kind of things are really widespread, aren't they? The thing that benefits the business is pre-selected. I have to say, since GDPR, I have noticed that that really has taken a bit of a nosedive. Now I think most people realize that you can't opt people into things. You know, like when you're filling out a, a form, a regular form, yeah. and the box to subscribe to their newsletter five years ago would always have been pre-ticked and you had to untick it. I'm noticing more now that everybody is at least yeah. getting a picture to untick those. You, you've got to opt into that, not be opted in by default. Yeah, but the overwhelming majority of websites get GDPR completely wrong, including mine, just because I'm lazy and I haven't changed the plugin and I need to do it. But usually, so basically, and Google has already been fined for this. Mm. The rule is that opting out has to be as easy as opting in. Right. So usually, most websites have okay, I accept the cookies, but they have cookie selection, you know, and you have to click on that. And that's completely wrong because no, it has to be yes or no. That's it. I don't have to be working for this. And some terrible websites actually have all the cookie options, cookie, all the tracking selected, and you need to go manually one at a time. through yeah. one at a time. And I think the one is Forbes. Oh, it, if, if it is Forbes... It's insane. It's uh, insane. I think it is Forbes. It, it, the so list that, is oh literally like nine pages of things. So to... it's going to go. So there you go. So it's already, it's completely obscuring my view. You can't see it because there's our faces up top. So there's oh, I a can, I white... can make that change. Hold no, on. don't okay. do that. Okay. Oh. Manage preferences. <laughs> it's on the bottom right, two white buttons. One is accept all cookies and privacy settings and so on. And the other one, the button on the left, is Manage Preferences. If I click, so Accept All is one click. That's it. Manage Preferences. Look how. Oh, sorry. What um, am I there even we go. looking there we go. at? Okay, there we go. what am I even looking at? So that it's actually, no, it's improved. Because it didn't used to be like this. It used, Now we've got a Reject All here, yeah. which is fine. It's still one click too many, but it's all right. What I meant earlier is that when you go into each of the toggle toggles for the oh there were the, like 10 more toggles inside each one there wasn't were there? 10 more toggles and they're all selected and you need to go every single one because <sighs> there's no reject or button and a lot of websites do this and that is wrong people that is absolutely wrong it has to be and also reject all is actually not doing anything oh it's submit so look reject all i click on it it doesn't do anything. I do not know whether I've activated that or not. Okay, so and they the are only rejected. Thing yeah, is okay. submit. Okay. So how yeah. do I know? You know, it's just bad. So I see so many websites that I would say 95% of the websites get this wrong. Also, this here, now you've learned the word vestibular disorder. You know, you've learned <laughs> know what vestibular disorders what are. Yes. So you know what it means? If people don't know what vestib vestibular, your vestibular system is your inner ear and everything that has to do with balance. Balance, and yeah. And so, and so on. My UX Copenhagen talk was all about this. This number, there's a number on the screen, a number of, of readers reading now, I imagine, uh, that's con constantly changing and it's making me sick. It's literally making me sick. Why do you have it? Do I care? No, I do not care. It doesn't improve my experience in any way. And I have to scroll down because it will make me sick because That's it just so doesn't stop. It changes. Yeah. Is no, there a certain level at which you are really in trouble? You know, it, it's like, get me out of here. And I know you're Oh, I'm already that, in but... trouble. Oh, I'm, really? But I mean, yeah, if okay. you, if you, um, one of the examples, actually, be quite fun. One of the examples that I use on the on in this uh, UX Copenhagen talk is um, a uh, email for a the WordPress Granada meetup that has, and he's still doing it. I need to speak to him. These are friends; I know them. And whenever they announce a meetup, the, he puts like six gifts 
in it. Okay. <laughs> they, it just and you can't stop them because they're in they're in an email. They're you can't gift. stop them. Yeah, they're yeah. absolutely pointless. They, they've nothing. They've got nothing to do. It's not even funny. And I'm like, right, okay. So I, I won't. I mean, it's Granada, so it's like six hours down the road. But I might want to go one day. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Well, I'm now going to find out where it is because I can't. I literally can't read the email. Can't read the email. These things changing because the, the, it's dynamic. It changes. What whatever is more popular will it will change again. That already bothers me. Oh, that'll change Anything live. Anything that I have going to change in front of your eyes. It's changing live. I think oh, so because okay. it's been happening. So yeah. uh, anything. So basically, you cannot have anything that animates without giving people control on the animation. I have to be able to stop it. I have actually uh, reduced motion activated in my browser, but unless people code it in, it's a CSS thing that people need to code in. But even if the motion is reduced, if I have no control over it, it will still make me sick. You know, there's, it, I, I can show you an animation that, that doesn't make me sick. <laughs> because it's well, yeah, so that's good. That's good. Because it's so uh, subtle. See here, the dog and the these are so subtle. I can't say that this bothers me. Okay. So I actually designed a website with some animations, but again, they're so. So for instance, this is wrong, and I told them this is not my set, not my fault, but this is not right. We will assume that you're happy with it. Wrong, wrong. Anyway, the lovely people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah, see, yeah, that yeah. animation that you had at the beginning, I don't mind it because it stops. That's it, done. And it's the patron and the composer meeting. So that's fine. It's nice. And then here, the... Yeah, it's very soft. Uh, there's an arrow down, going down, that uh, has a very tiny movement that tells me it's interactive. So that's fine. I'm all right with it. And if, when I go down, there are a few other anime, like this, this animation here. Very and uh, it's so subtle. But it's not doing it anything once you let go, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just stop and here again with the um, as I go down, there are other animations that come up, and they're all really, really subtle. And this was done by Mylen Garcia, who's a wonderful uh, Elemental specialist from the, this is a website created in Elemental from the Spanish community. So thank you, Mylen. And even this tiny animation in the buttons that. The battles have another animation, which is really just a hover effect. So that's fine. You can do that. But anything else that we I can't control absolutely makes me sick. There's, and every single website that gets um, an award from the awards website. Oh, the webbies. From other webs, the webbies, they're all, in fact, that, that, that's, I use those examples randomly selected. Literally, I swear to God. I randomly selected two websites from the Webbies and they were both completely inaccessible. I had Lazar, my friend that I mentioned earlier, who's blind, test them. They were like, I have no idea what's in this site. Oh. And one of them was, was uh, the Getty. Getty, Getty, uh, do, um, it was uh, Mesopotamia. This is the one. So looks beautiful. Basically, it's a website that says Mesopotamia. It's mm -hmm. what we're seeing is a is a black screen with big white type on it, saying Mesopotamia is the big title. An intimate look at some extraordinary objects for an exhibition at the Getty Villa. And he won oh, the Webby for scroll. architecture. It's all on scroll. And uh, basically oh, yeah. goes over the what's in this museum room. And it has images and captions for them. And it's like totally, totally blank for a screen reader. Nothing. So my point was, why not just do a video instead? Because you can make a video accessible. Yeah. It's somebody, and in that case, trying to be really clever. It is very clever, but it's also, like you just said, infuriating if you can't actually if, use it. Exactly. And my point... I think that the reason why this is not a video is that if they'd done a video, it would have been the educational value would have been much higher, but they would not have won an award right. because this wins an award because it's at the forefront of web development, but as a video, it would not have won an award. So the agency who was asked to do it said, let's, let's do win a, the award. Yeah. And I know it sounds really harsh, but you cannot in 2023 people, 
you can't do spend all this money on this on an educational piece and and it's completely inaccessible yeah it's, it's just can you imagine how yeah, would you do yeah, that I would you know what you'd be looking the door at yep 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 you know it's just wrong so i like to make these examples because people need to know they need to, we all need to become aware i didn't used to be aware i didn't used to i was a bit of a dick as well and now <laughs> i'm not because now i'm aware and i put myself in the shoes of laza who can't see at all nothing never it, has i i, so I think it's quite a, happy with, but you know it, yeah it needs to it, it's kind of like a nerdy experience isn't it it's very very clever and you can see that it's clever but if it's ruling out a significant proportion of the population like yeah. you can see even that when it tilts. So there's a picture of a lion embedded in a wall. And when that tilts, it is a different image. It's not the same image being manipulated by CSS. Yeah, it's not. So, so look at that. That is different from the image we had a minute ago because you can see the shadows. It's a different image. It's like a 3 It's like a video. Effect. It's like you're scrolling through a video frame it's, by frame, basically. You are washing, wiping, swiping through a video. That's the thing that actually infuriated me because if it were really clever and truly interactive, that would be something that I understand. But once you've visited this site a few times, you realize that actually the only thing that you're doing is you're scrolling down. That's it. Look at me scrolling down. That's it. Yeah, that, scrolling not, down and altering. I can't go anywhere yeah, else yeah, on the yeah, image. Yeah. It's yeah. all predetermined anyway. Yeah. So why would you do this and shut people out? Yeah. And I think that you could say I'm always... I always like to not presume, um, not assume malice. I like that. I, I think it's fair enough. We need to give people the benefit of the doubt. So I do not like pointing figures or anything like that. But if you are a major educational institution, you have to be thinking about these things. It really, you should have done by now. And yeah. if you haven't, you need to to start thinking about it. I, I was would agree. really surprised. Yeah. Because in a way, and I literally went onto the web and, and went for the first two sites that I found. The first <laughs> two sites. And I, I because I was like, I can't be looking for them. It has to be a natural experience because it's my point. I've been saying it for years. And it's the Webby and the awards website, the one with the three double W's. Yeah, I know the one. And you mean, I've yeah. been saying it for years. And um and that any site on there that wins an award is unaccessible or unusable, which often is the same thing, both, you know. And uh, and they always are. And I still have not found one that is accessible. Yeah, I just haven't. I haven't. Because there, it's this equation between animation and creativity. And that's my focus now, Nathan, I'll have you know. And it's that's what the UX Copenhagen type... Uh, uh, a talk was was about that my point was your animations your gifts and your animations are literally making me sick that was the first point and the second <laughs> point was can we be creative why are we at the moment equating a creativity with animation yeah that's clearly what is going on because the only sites that get awards are the unusable unaccessible inaccessible ones uh, on the webby and awards websites they keep getting all the awards and i can't use them and lots more people can't use them yeah you know? yeah good point so, so why are we teachers mission in 2023 is to uh, is to highlight more of this deceptive design i should say the website that we were looking at earlier is deceptive.design yes uh https this one isn't it so this is it this is not it um there we go thank you peacher let me oh well, wait a sec. There we go. Right, let me take that away. <laughs> I made you go away for a second. Uh, I'm not very good with this platform this week. I've been using this for years. I um, know. You for quite on the the, whiz. I, I, well, I set it up and it just works. But today I decided I was going to fiddle around a little bit. Um, I guess we'll try and do this in a month, but probably be back in like November or something. <laughs> something well, in like a month, that. it's exactly work and pure up, isn't it? Is it? You're going, I guess. It is. I am going because I am going as the um, correspondent for Master WP. <laughs> I'm going as a journalist this time. What have you got to do? Do you know? I have to write two pieces. Nice. 
Yeah, that's, very nice. Very also, they nice. pay. Master yeah, yeah. WP pay. So that's been nice. It's an actual assignment. I'm on assignment. Yeah, You're going, uh, I guess. You, I, I don't know good. yet. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. There's just lots of things going we on. We can't do it without you. We you have know, family so. and exams and things like that. So it's a really, it's a difficult a difficult time but well, okay we'll i understand that yeah, yeah, yeah. exams are brutal it is anyway, tricky we've been um yeah we, we've overshot so we, we can overshot. carry on talking in a moment but yeah. we'll we'll knock it on the head um i'll put this episode out onto the onto the youtube channel and we will see you again soon peacher thank you very much it's always so much fun take it